Mayor, let me just start quickly that uh, what we have today is a progress report on what's been happening. And of course, Mandy has uh, jointly worked with us in the downtown management district when council approved that contract uh, several months ago. That she's come on board. Mandy has spent a great deal of time in outreach to many of the nonprofits and many of the other organizations and really helping us in one way or another work through the labyrinth of various programs and goals that we have. Mandy's going to go through what that programs are, those programs are now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Parker and City Council members, for this opportunity to update you. Um, as you see, there's a PowerPoint presentation in front of you, and I, I just want to walk you through a high-level overview of kind of the direction uh, that we've taken um, based on uh, input from the community and uh, you know lots of expertise along the way. I think the, the first place to start is to understand that Houston has one of the highest homeless populations in the nation. <clears throat> that during the 2012 enumeration, you can see that there are around 8,500 homeless individuals in our jails, shelters, and on our streets on any given night. And that among those are a number of veterans who are homeless and very chronically ill individuals <clears throat> who suffer from significant disabling conditions. A chronically homeless person is, is someone who has a disabling condition and they often experience multiple episodes of homelessness as a result. In many cases, they're continuously homeless for a year or more. Um, next slide, please. If um, if we look at that definition and we take it and, we, and we take the individuals that meet that literal uh, definition, we see around 1,400 of those on any given night. We've done some projections and, and looked at what the that population may look like over the next couple of years, and we think that that's likely to grow to around 1,800 individuals. And if we then look at an additional subset of very vulnerable families who are suffering from significant conditions, as well as youth aging out of the foster care system with no support, and oftentimes suffering from disabling conditions, we really estimate that there's about 2,500 individuals or households that need a level of intervention um, that warrants the creation of a plan to end chronic homelessness. Next slide, please. So not only is this a, a moral issue in that when folks are left to languish on the streets, it actually takes about 25 years off of their life, which is on par with many forms of cancer. We know that there's also a financial cost to our city in particular. So as you can see, there's all sorts of taxpayer services, or services that are funded with taxpayers, dollars that go to really just respond to this issue, not even to solve it. Not to mention the number of departments that are affected um, at the city by this issue, including the Houston Police Department, Fire, Municipal Courts, Legal, Parks and Recreation Department in particular, and I know the library is acutely affected, and, and you've probably seen and heard the impact of that. As you can see, we've tried to estimate some of the particular costs on a daily basis just to respond to some of these individuals. Next slide, please. We were also able to look at a study across four different cities in, as to the actual cost of chronic homelessness, and when we averaged uh, those numbers and applied it to our 2,500 individuals that we believe are languishing on our streets. Uh, next slide, please. It produced a, a total investment, annual investment, of about $103 million that we're spending just to manage this problem in public resources, not even to solve it. And so we really see this as an opportunity to shift these resources and actually end the problem at hand. Next slide, please. We know that there are also some hidden costs that we should that shouldn't go overlooked, right? As it relates to economic development, uh, you know, uh, the opportunity for businesses to thrive. You know, property values are adversely affected when homeless individuals are left on the streets. We know that it, it doesn't contribute to a positive perception of our city when folks come to visit and see a significant amount of homeless. And we also know that it creates a lot of public policy liabilities, which I think many of you have experienced. Next slide, please. So the responsibility or the the, the um, solution really that we see is to end chronic homelessness by 2016. This is really in line with the direction of the federal government, but also in line with all of the various stakeholders that came to the table last year for a charrette in August and, and asked the city in particular to really think about leading an effort to meet this goal. Next slide, please. So we've been able to develop a three-pronged approach, we, what we're calling our uh, Houston's plan. That strategy first involves knowing who these homeless individuals are, identifying them, prioritizing them for placement into housing as they are our most vulnerable. The second strategy is to really create access to permanent housing. 
And then the third would be to link services to that permanent housing so these individuals can remain stably housed. Next slide. When we identified this plan with all of our stakeholders, we then needed to ask ourselves, what is really the role of the city in this? And what we, what we believe, and what we've already seen to date, is that there is a lot of opportunity to provide leadership while working in collaboration with our partners, including the county, the housing authorities, private foundations, and the downtown business community. We also believe that there's an opportunity to really drive implementation. The city receives a significant amount of federal resources that can be invested in the, these types of activities. Housing and community development has control of a sig significant number of those and has been an excellent partner in this process. Finally, we believe that there's really an opportunity to create systems of accountability, right? That if we're going to commit to this issue, you as council members and the mayor have the opportunity to really provide oversight and, and drive uh, this process forward. Next slide. To give you just a very brief overview of, of the details of these strategies, the first, of course, is to create a coordinated placement system. And this will actually begin um, in a couple of weeks with a registry week in the downtown area. We will be going out as, home, as survey teams to survey about a thousand homeless individuals to, in order to determine their vulnerability. We'll then use um, what's called a homeless management information system, which is the database that all homeless service providers enter into, to continue to track these individuals and prioritize them for placement and housing. This is a really important step forward in creating standard access, in creating standard assessment, and in essence creating accountability across the provider community to ensure that we're actually housing our most vulnerable individuals rather than overlooking them and leaving them on the street. Next slide, please. The second strategy is really about creating 2,500 units of permanent supportive housing. Permanent supportive housing is a type of affordable housing that is, uh, includes wraparound services that help stabilize some of the most chronically homeless individuals.